CSF provides uh, educational services for people with Chiari and syringomyelia. We help raise awareness in the medical community uh, with regards to the two disorders. And we also provide fundraising uh, to raise money to fund research into the causes and hopefully a cure for Chiari and syringomyelia. Well, I have syringomyelia. I've had it since probably 1989. Uh, I was undiagnosed until about 1998. Uh, my form of syringomyelia was trauma-based, uh, meaning that uh, I was not born with it. I more or less acquired it at some point during my life. Uh, I pinpoint that to a surgery I had when I was a teenager. When I first uh, started having problems with my back, with the ependymoma, uh, it was in the spring of 1976. I was a sophomore in high school playing on the school baseball team and I started to lose the feeling in my feet and my lower legs accompanied by shooting sciatica type pain down both legs um, that just made it impossible for me to attend school. So I missed about two weeks of school. Uh, the pain subsided, the feeling came back and I finished the school year without any further problems. In the summer of 1976, as I was preparing for the football season, uh, the same situation happened. And again, pain where I couldn't get out of bed for two weeks, um, it eventually passed. Um, I was able to start the football season of my junior year, but when the weather started to turn to be colder and damper, the pain came back and by the time the, the school semester was over for my junior year, the first semester in 1976, I could barely walk. Um, I had been to several doctors, mostly orthopedic surgeons, who diagnosed me first with a slipped disc, as they kept calling it, uh, rather than a herniated disc because there was none. Uh, and then secondarily, they suggested that my parents take me to a psychiatrist because I was crazy. There was, the only thing they could do for me was give me x-rays. And the x-rays only show the bone, they don't show what's inside. So the x-rays kept coming back that this kid is crazy. There's nothing wrong with them. Eventually, when I reached the point in early December of 1976 where I could barely walk, uh, I was admitted to, at the time, uh, it was Nassau Hospital, which is now Winthrop in Mineola. Uh, the neurosurgeon that I saw there decided to do a myelogram in which they inject a dye into your spinal column and then they put you on a table and strap you in and stand you up and then rotate the table so that you're basically standing on your head so the dye goes up and down your spine to see if they could see if there's anything going on inside the spinal column. Um, unfortunately for me, when he put the needle in to inject the dye, he stuck it right into the tumor. So after they peeled me off the ceiling, <laughs> screaming at the top of my lungs, we postponed it for a day and they moved the entry uh, location for the needle. And when they got the dye in, they could see that the dye would go up, but it wouldn't go back down. So they realized there was some kind of blockage in there. So that was how I was diagnosed. Uh, they informed my parents that there was a good chance I was never gonna walk again. But uh, the doctor went in, removed the tumor, and two weeks later I walked out of the hospital. In the beginning, I'll be honest, it was very, very difficult to get a grip on the fact that I wouldn't be able to walk again. Uh, it took me a good five years to accept the fact that I was gonna end up in a wheelchair. Um, I walked on crutches for those five years uh, in a manner that was probably dangerous to myself, but I wasn't ready to accept the fact that I needed to be in a wheelchair. Once I accepted that fact, the wheelchair has actually made my life very much easier. Uh, I'm very active uh, in all aspects. Um, I'm an avid golfer. I travel all over the world. Um, and very often uh, that I'm on the road. Um, I don't really look at being in a wheelchair as being uh, an obstacle. It's actually opened a lot of doors for me. Even though Chiari and Syringomyelia are, are not very well known today, as you can imagine back in 1998, no one knew anything about it. Interestingly, the doctor who, a neurosurgeon who diagnosed me, 
Uh, when he finally told me after three years of searching, uh, when he finally told me that I had syringomyelia, my first question to him was, okay, what do we do now? And his answer was, now you go find someone who knows what they're doing. Well, a database by, by nature is a collection of, of data. Um, the more data that we can accumulate the uh, more informed patients will be, and the more informed doctors will be, uh, and that data can be shared. So presently, uh, one of the problems that I've always seen in the Chiari and Syringomyelia world is that you can go from hospital to hospital, or doctor to doctor, or even state to state and country to country and get completely different diagnoses depending on who you go to see and uh, what their particular fashion is for, for treating the, the disease. Um, having a database allows the sharing of information and I think that's very, very important. Having CSF do it, you know, our stated goal is to find a cure and I really do believe bringing people together from around the world, people meaning patients as well as doctors and researchers that everyone can check each other's work is really a first major step in that direction. Personally, I, I would choose the broadest. Uh, I don't need to be that private um, at, with respect to what we're trying to accomplish. And if I could share as much of my information as possible and that's going to help someone else, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, everyone has their own uh, degree of comfort with sharing their, their medical history. However, I would urge people um, to consider the good that we would be done by sharing as much information as you can. And really that is the purpose of our registry, to get everyone to share their information, share their diagnoses, share their uh, symptoms, conditions, and surgical outcomes if they've had surgery. Um, I think that's a very important part of moving forward to finding a cure. The more information we have, the better off and the quicker we're gonna get to that final goal. Once a patient registers, CSF will guard the privacy of the information and will, on, will be the only ones to have access to that information. Uh, doctors won't be able to access your individual information. Only CSF will be the gatekeeper, so to speak, of the uh, information that is in our database. Um, you will be able to access your own information to make changes or updates as necessary, uh, but again, no one will be able to access your information other than yourself and CSF staff for purposes of providing that information to doctors for any particular study that may be taking place. Mm -hmm.